So in general, uh, the EcoQ, I am very pleased with it so far. I will definitely use it. It would be suitable for uh, car camping trips. If you want a good uh, compact charcoal grill, you saw how it folds down really small. For lightweight, um, ultralight canoe portage trips, probably not a, um, a uh, big choice, but it's up to you. For the type of canoe trips I generally do with either no portaging, just canoe to site, or kind of a more luxury, uh, short portages, few portages, and lots of luxury gear, I would definitely take this. I just took a 18 inch cast iron frying pan on a trip like that, which weighs probably twice what this weighs. So this is a no brainer for me on the types of canoe trips that I do. I would definitely uh, take this even with some portages. All right, we're going to take a look at the Eco Cube. This is, uh, I've been wanting one of these things for a number of years now. It used to be called a Pyromid. I think Pyromid went out of business, and I can't remember all the details, but a buddy of mine has one of the original Pyromids, and he just loves it. It's a portable charcoal barbecue. Um, Supposedly you can set this up on your kitchen counter if you want to because of the nature of the stand. Heat goes up so that's separated from anything, any surface you're on. So, although I'm not sure about burning those kind of uh, combustibles inside your house. <coughs> so it's kind of a neat looking thing. That's not the part I need yet. Yeah, here we go. So we're going to set up Oops There's that That Now there's two different um, Wait a second. So, you want to come in and look down here. So, this goes in the bottom, and you're supposed to put your fire starter on that one. And then this one goes on top of it, and you're supposed to put your charcoal on this one. Or they say if you want a cooler burn, you just put your charcoal directly on this one. So, this gives you heat adjustability basically by deciding where to put your charcoal. I haven't used it yet, as you can see it's pretty shiny, so we're going to see uh, how this all works out. I'm going to cook some hamburgers on it. And uh, so, this is the cooking surface that comes with it. goes in there. You can pay extra if you want a griddle, so my dear wife got me this for my birthday, and she got me the griddle. So if you want to do anything like pancakes or whatever, I don't know, you can do it on there. I'll probably use this one. And then in addition to all of this, unlike a hibashi or something similar, this has a nifty little lid that goes on it, which is pretty important for good grilling to have a lid. So that's how the thing goes together. It even has this little um, doohickey. Or, uh, oops, it goes the other way. They're getting the lid on and off while it's hot, so you can uh, take the lid on and off that way. I'm going to load it up here with some charcoal, spark it up, and we'll see how it works. So, they also sell these um, foil liners too that uh, you see I've already put it in here. Um, I don't care too much about getting it dirty but I don't know for the first use what the heck I'll try the foil liners it's wasteful I know that I'm gonna try them out anyway all right so I've got lump charcoal here one thing about this thing I didn't point out the holes in this other grate are supposedly precisely calibrated for charcoal briquettes I don't like charcoal briquettes because they have binders in there that if you've ever used it in like a big green egg or something, it's kind of gross. Um, so I'm not going to get the precise calibration of heat that uh, this is designed for, but just by spreading this 
lump charcoal around, I think I'll be okay. We're going to apply some methyl hydrate uh, to uh, more than that. All right, so light a match and throw it in. Put that over there because um, I got to keep it way over there. Make sure you don't have any on yourself. No, like on this hand. <laughs> Go, just throw it in. Don't even put it. All right, so that's what we're gonna do to start it up. I took a piece of the charcoal bag and put it at the bottom, so the bag for the charcoal. I do that with my big green egg as well. Basically use the pieces of the bag as it's being emptied to um, use as starter. So we're going to let that develop that the coals uh, gray up a little bit and then we're going to cook something. One thing I've already noted with the foil liner is that <coughs> there aren't very many holes poked in it and they don't necessarily line up with the holes in the bottom part. So it was really poor airflow, so I shuffled coals about and poked all the holes out to get better airflow, and I should get the coals going better now as a result. All right, so we got a good bit of heat going here. It's reasonably even, slightly more over here, but I think um, the nature of this thing is supposed to uh, even out the heat. So I'm going to put the grill on, and then we're going to throw some burgers on there. That's my daughter in the background. So we're ready to throw some burgers on there. I don't know what's the best way to, uh, probably only going to get four on there at a time. This thing isn't meant for high volume, but, uh, all right, and then I'm going to set a timer. I don't have a thermometer for this right now. I normally like to cook with a thermometer, but, um, I don't have one right now, so I'm going to go by timer, and I'm going to put the... There's my lid thing. I'm going to put the lid on it. There we go. Alright, so I was just doing a heat check here. Um, I can put my hand under there and there's not the slightest bit of heat, but I do note that the bottom surface of this thing is exceptionally hot and I'm not quite sure that what that would be from because the fire is basically in this part there must be some heat reflecting down I guess but the bottom of that you're going to burn yourself pretty quickly on that um, no question at all but right here like I can get my hand right under there as long as I'm not touching that bottom surface my hand is fine so this would be fine on any surface that I can see there is no heat coming below that whatsoever that's five minutes on that side. I'm going to uh, give these fellas a flip and hope that I don't burn my table over there with that hot thing. Well, I'm just going to scorch it, but we'll see. So, well, it's looking pretty reasonable. I'll do five minutes on this side and then... Alright, so that's about six minutes on the other side. have enough. Alright, let's see. That is rare, which I don't like in ground beef, especially if I didn't grind it myself. That one's done. That one's done. That one's done. This guy is the rogue. So I'll flip them all and give it a few more minutes. So we're going to have another look at this guy. Yeah, they're definitely all done now. That's a little overdone, depending on who you talk to. That one's overdone. Alright, off they come. Alright, that was about 15 minutes. I just want to see what we got left here for coals. So we still have plenty of coals 
to put on another round of uh, burgers so that won't be an issue so I'm gonna put the next round of burgers on all right round two is on the grill all, all right then we're ready to flip and uh, ready for round two uh, second side That one's even, this one is a little uneven. We'll see how that goes. One thing I like to do when I'm grilling is I've had this touching the raw meat, so I stick it in, I do this on my egg. I do it uh, basically to sanitize the uh, utensil so that when I use it at the very end, there's no chance of there being like some raw meat juice or whatever on it. So that's protruding down through here and it's getting a very high temperature right now. Alright, so second 10 minutes. Take that guy off of there. Whoops, I just covered up my thermometer. Alright, so... So that's in the good, uh, that's in a good range there. That's uh, 10 minutes. Mm, that guy's a little rare for my liking. That's getting into a good range. That's in a good range. So still not getting even heat, which I uh, blame on me using the um, the uh, lump charcoal rather than the briquettes. But it's still pretty good. So these two guys need to get flipped. One last check of the temperatures. And that guy's where I want it. And that guy's where I want it. That guy's where my wife wants it. And that's in between. So these are all good. 13 minutes this time. And it looks like there's still a lot of coals there. I could do another round. So about five minutes have passed, uh, long enough for me to eat my burger. We're just going to look at how much uh, coals are left. You can see there's a slight, um, slight dip in the grill, so it's buckled a little bit under the heat, but it's nothing too serious. Um, there's still quite a bit of coals left there. I could easily do a third round of burgers. I think the problems I had with slightly uneven heat are due to the fact that I have used lump charcoal as I mentioned. Um, if you look at the videos from the company of how to place the uh, charcoal briquettes in there, um, it's, quite, um, it's quite a precision operation that should provide extremely even heat. So if you're using lump charcoal you're just going to have to do your best to, uh, to mitigate for the, or to uh, compensate for that. You'll have to do your best to compensate for it. Um, the only unknown part now is how to put it out. So I guess I'm just going to have to let it burn out at this point in time. Um, on my big green egg, I shut down the vents, top and bottom. And it basically turns off the combustion. On this one, I'm just going to have to let it... Uh, I guess I could introduce some water to it or something like that. Another thing, the final thing I'm going to check on, I've had this metal plate under here the whole time. I'm going to pull that out, put my hand right on it, and it's cool as a cucumber, so there's no heat whatsoever. Even though the bottom of this is extremely hot and you will burn yourself on it, it's not throwing any heat whatsoever down. That's cool as a cucumber. Alright, it's a good hour later, a little bit more than an hour. There's still a lot of coals there. I'm just noting that what would be a nice feature on here is if they had a couple of holes in there so that I could uh, pop this handle in there to lift that whole section out and then dump that on the ground or in an ash bin or something like that. Um, what I'd like to do at this point, I mean I'd preserve those for future use. You could even sprinkle some water on it or something like that, I don't know. but. I could dump that on the ground and then stomp it out with my foot or who knows what. So that would be kind of a 
a neat little feature if the EcoQ people are watching or you could even drill your own holes in there so that you could lift that this this piece out while it's still hot without need for oven mitts or what have you.